but we do have a really super panel to um, to kick us off. Um, Will Butler Adams, OBE, um, is a uh, all round legendary uh, business leader. He's the chief executive of Brompton, um, manufactures uh, 100,000 bikes per year. He is the ultimate definition of getting on his bike. He's grown it from a 2 million to 100 million turnover. Um, business. Gavin Starks is the founder of Icebreaker One, uh, which makes data work harder to deliver net zero. Um, and Elena Zayakova Williams is the senior director of sustainability at Sage, um, where she leads the ESG disclosure practice, specifically helping small and medium-sized enterprises on the race to net zero. Do join us, guys. Come on, come on. Thanks very much. Elena, <clears throat> good morning. Right, our first panel. Let's make it a goodie. Gavin, um, let's just sort of, let's just make the case, I guess, for sustainable businesses. Because, you know, there, there will be people that sit there and they'll go, well, actually, quite a lot of these, these things are, you know, they, they might make us less productive. They might make life more difficult. What, what's, the, what's the riposte in terms of good growth and how you do it well, do you think? I think there's a huge amount of innovation to be unlocked in this. And our focus is a lot around how do you use data to help enable uh, that innovation. To your point, there's a vast amount of waste. Uh, you could look at pretty much any commercial building. Could it save 10% of its energy? Yes, uh, almost certainly. Could it save 30% of its energy? Probably. Um, and that's um, really enabled by unlocking access to all of the information that helps to run the uh, commercial uh, properties and assets. And that kind of applies across uh, many different kinds of industries. So we can start to look at how can we be more competitive? How can we utilize what we have more effectively? And at the same time, there's a vast amount of innovation that has to happen on, and is happening in the energy sector. We're transitioning to um, fossil fuel free vehicles. You know, that, that's a massive transition mm. and involves the mashing up of the energy sector and the transportation sector in a way they have not had to do before. So there, there's, there's a lot of scope for innovation. So if you're a business looking at you know, how to innovate into the future, one is start measuring the things you care about and not just profit, but how do we uh, drive um, innovation around uh, efficiency? And then how do we drive towards just making our products and supply chains uh, as uh, neutral as possible? Elena, your job is to make this real for small and medium-sized firms. And I suppose there is a conversation that goes on at COP or Davos and other sorts of um, forums. But when you're on the front line of running small and medium-sized firms, what's the conversation you have with them about sustainability and how that might lead to a better type of growth? Yes, we. Um, the, one of the kind of probably the most um, often asked question is where do I start? Mm -hmm. And um, we do a lot of research um, at Sage with regards to the challenges and the barriers SMEs um, face when it comes to sustainability. And um, we hear um, cash flow is an issue. We, we hear um, the question of where do I start, the questions of um, the government has so many different regulations and policies at the moment. How do I cope with this or where, you know, I'm expected to respond and, um, and, and I don't know uh, where to start. So I think um, our, um, or our advice and every time we speak to our customers, uh, they probably, there's probably the moment where you need to kind of almost um, stop thinking about sustainability being really scary and big because it is and mm. issues are huge uh, but really take small steps and start thinking what does this mean in terms of your resilience in the future as a business are you going to be in business for the next two five years mm. and what this means in practical terms is really looking into um for example, um, efficiencies, energy efficiency, starting with the really simple things of how you run your business, but then also um, thinking about, um, obviously, net zero, the government has made huge commitments um, and SMEs are and will be part in delivering these commitments. Um, so how do you make sure that your net zero targets or your net zero strategy is part of your business plan? How do you communicate this and bring your, your people along as well? And then the final thing I will say, which is um, 
just to the, to the point Gavin was also making around data. So measurement, measurement of your impact. So SMEs will be expected and are already expected to understand the impact, to um, gain access to supply chains, mm -hmm. to gain access to capital. Um, this is something we often hear in terms of how, how do I start measuring my carbon emissions? What is carbon footprint? So we have a role to, um, to, to educate, to handhold, uh, but ultimately um, kind of that measurement piece and that data piece, and there's a lot that we need to improve in terms of data. Mm -hmm. um, it's incredibly um, important. I want, I want to come back to supply chains, but Will, the, yep. the, um, if I was to look at that poll, what I'd say is that there's a very sizable minority of businesses here this morning that have probably got good intentions to actually get on with this, but have not yet made the critical actions and steps. W what's the advice you'd give based on Brompton's experience about becoming a more sustainable business. You've just got to get on with it. So everywhere you look, it's just riddled in waste. And I'm not even that bothered about measuring it. I mean, as it happens, we're a bigger business. We've done scope one, we've done scope two, we're working on scope three. But you, you can spend so much time measuring it, you forget there's enormous opportunity there, classic in our factory. Mm -hmm. That we put this air conditioning, I fighted it for about six years, and then the, the planet's getting so hot, I had to put air conditioning because everyone was sweltering. So I finally gave it, you know, gave in to the air conditioning. So now we've spent gone a fortune on air conditioning in all our offices. And then what do they do? Of course, they set it to 22 degrees. Perfect. <laughs> 22 degrees, perfect. So, of course, as soon as it's 21, it tries to get to 22. As soon as it's 23, it tries to go down to 22. It's permanently working, this thing. I said, that's a stupid idea. Let's not turn it on unless it's colder than 19. In other words, unless it gets to 19, we don't heat. And unless it gets to 26, we don't cool. So our office has no air, no air conditioning or heating between 19 and 26. In other words, in the winter, you put a jumper on. <laughs> and in the summer, you wear shorts. What a revelation. <laughs> but you go into businesses, and they're set at this perfect temperature, and they're just burning carbon. And I mean, I could go on, we're riddled in it and, and you've got to, it's a team effort and it's positive and it's, everyone feels good and everyone can pile in and you've just got to put a teeny weeny bit of investment and open the business up to ideas and they will come flooding because we are scared about it. People want to do positive stuff and it all delivers to the bottom line. This year, 2.1 million are win on waste by being smarter and that's win on waste. Money, of course, has a direct impact on the environment too. So, Gavin, I suppose you'd sum up Will's answer there as a kind of Nike of sustainability. Just do it. I think that's it's a great, great <laughs> call to action. <laughs> uh, I, I think there's a few things there. One, one is, you know, we're, we're about to be, uh, we're, we're drowning in data already. And, and um, I think that there's two things I'd take away from, uh, from that comment. One is leadership is absolutely required. Um, it, it requires that just get on with it uh, approach. Um, and I think given the, the nature of you know, regulation is coming to this space quickly, uh, we'll see regulation from the FCA, from the SEC, uh, and uh, Mark Carney was saying just a few weeks ago to a room full of people working on TCFD reporting, the Task Force for Climate Related Financial Disclosures, saying this is not just a data collection exercise. Please focus on the things that matter. Uh, and I think that that's really um, one of the challenges in this. We can get very satisfied with ourselves about measuring things, but not acting. Mm. Uh, and a good, you know, just looking at property, it, it's a very common example. Last year, there was a building in London, quite a new building, that was burning 800 homes worth of energy during the heat wave, because the heating system and the cooling system were fighting with each other. And the building was empty. Mm. Uh, so it's, it's ludicrous, and it can be solved with, you know, leadership, but also the system, the data is there. We need the intelligence layered onto that to, to get access to it and find those things and switch them off. Because one thing we do know about the, the built world is the as designed is very different from the as implemented a few years later. Right, Elena, I mean, the thing I'm, I'm sort of thinking about is give us a sense of, of what it means to be a sustainable business. Because is it just as simple as the things that have just been said there? you know, wear shorts, turn the heating off. Do, I mean, is that, is that, I mean, is, is it as practical as that? Or, do you, or, do, or are there, you know, how do you, how do you define it, judge it? I mean, you look at this as a, as a, as a job, right? 
I do. Um, and I, I recently saw a really interesting book coming from Nike, just to continue that conversation on Nike. Um, and the title of the book is, After All, There Is No Finish Line. Mm. It made me think that, um, uh, for me, sustainability is, is about that continuous mindset and continuous improvement. So I, I come from a management consultancy background, and my clients often ask me, Am I going to be a sustainable business in two years' time? Am I going to be best in practice in two years' time? I think it comes with finding the ideas on a daily basis and that continuous mindset of how I can get my operations better, how can I engage my workforce better, how can I engage my all of my stakeholders mm. in a better way and make sure that I address their needs um, as, as I go. But if you were to, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there are people that are sat here thinking, I want to be a sustainable business. The, what's the advice sure. you give them in terms of a practical step? What, what, above and beyond just do it, what are the things yeah. you should really look at? Yeah, so um, sustainability for me comes to um, uh, your your resilience in the future. Um, and it, it's about the near future as, long, as well as the longer future. And I think um, the, the, the important things to look into is to look into this um, risks and opportunities that come with the current environment and all of the um, sustainability topics that we're issues that we are faced with and analyze them understand what this means for for your business um, and um, and really try to integrate them in the way um, in the way you operate so it's really about that proactive thinking of what are these risks? Connect with your audiences understand what they think these risks are yeah. and incorporate them in the way you operate well I'm I think this this quote you might like. I interviewed Tristram Stewart, who is the Toast Ale founder, and of course they've created a an amazing business using bread that was destined for landfill and turning it into beer. And his argument is: look, at the end of the day, what sustainability campaigners need to deliver is not just the measurement, but the better party. They need to excite people. They need to bring people with them. I mean, that strikes me for a man sat there with Union Jack sort of socks on. I mean, is that is that how you do I mean, is that a kind of competitive advantage? Is that something that the UK could get very, very good at and excited about, do you think? If, you know, if we're going to solve the world's problems, the most successful businesses have to be sustainable because, unfortunately, the majority of people um, are driven by money. So I'm furiously determined to be very commercially successful through being sustainable, and that's a very generic word. But um, it, it, and it's it's not um, it just so. I mean, you know, you you get into your scope two, one, two, and threes, but really it's about doing stuff. So you, you ask the question, what can you do? Everybody can change to green energy. That's a five-minute phone call. Costs about three percent. Then you need to look to your staff and encourage your staff and educate your staff. Because it's not just about what your business does. Mm. It's about everything you touch. Your supply chain harder depends where they are. But there are so many th simple things we can do. And it's, you know, we've got to get on with it from a sort of personal, emotional perspective. And also, we need to get on with it because from a business perspective, if we don't, we won't be here. But the, the steps are so basic to me. And it's just a question of time and designing and thinking and measuring. But if you're not doing them, I mean, gosh, you know, you just, it, it's not even some enormous amount of money. You just got to do it. Mm. Is there a, I mean, I'm just looking at questions here that are, are popping up on, on the slide. Eh? Is that, is there a point about culture in terms of actually bringing teams with you? I mean, who's pushing, who's pulling in a business like yours, Will? And then maybe others could have a, a view in, in terms of the relationship between people and activism here. So in most areas of our business, people need to be given the freedom to be allowed to do what they feel. And I think it's, it's not like the leader has to um, inspire them to do stuff funny enough. You just need to give them the freedom to do what they want to do. And everybody really wants to do it. But the trouble is, particularly you find leaders are often older generation, don't take it so seriously, think it'll wash over, obsess with a PL, and think it's a cost. Oh, we don't want to do that. If you can open up and allow your team to feel like they can contribute, the ideas just come mm. gushing in. And, and give them the freedom and the autonomy to make change in what they're doing. And, and Gavin, um, just, just on this issue of, of climate change, we've got a question here about well, what, what really makes up the constituent parts of what businesses should be looking at. Is, is it 
more than just looking at your carbon contribution? Well, I think it's looking holistically. I think to your, to your point about who pays, it's, well, everyone. Uh, you know, this is a societal issue that affects every single business and every single individual um, and every country. Uh, so and if we want to go far here, we've got to go together. So I think that there's a lot of challenges there around collaboration. So when we're looking at then at, you know, where to apply focus, energy is obviously like right at the, the top of the list uh, there. Uh, and, and, but it goes right the way through the chain to materials. There's loads of work being done on basic raw materials like cement, mm. which have a, a huge impact. Transportation, huge impact. Global shipping. You know, do we, should we be shipping things around the world, uh, regardless of how they're powered at the moment? But, you know, global shipping industry is um, a, a huge impact on uh, our, our global footprints. So, you know, but that doesn't necessarily mean that local production is lower carbon. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's, there's lots of <clears throat> questions to be asked in there. Uh, and I think one of my observations is SMEs in, in particular, they don't have the time, money, or necessarily inclination because they're worried about payroll, they're worried about you know, today's issues. Mm. Um, and so there does need to be a collective action piece here where preferential lending rates for green investments uh, as an option that can be evidenced, again, that comes back to data flow, so that the capital can be unlocked. And we're seeing, you know, we're going to see energy efficiency regulated. Now that, that's kind of new territory, but that has to be accompanied by the financial instruments that help businesses make the difference. Right. When you look at, um, a lot of the sustainability plans, especially of governments and larger corporations, they spread out over decades, 20, 30, 40, 50, when you look at, at goals. There is a question about quickly versus properly, and how does the entrepreneurial urge to just get it done play its part in making change happen quickly, do you think? So we signed up to net zero by 2050, specifically to say that it, it was not possible, um, rather than to then say that we've ticked the box and aren't we brilliant? Because as we've just heard, green steel, green aluminium, we're not there yet. And, and that is a role for government, um, Europe, it, it's, it's big macro industrial policy that needs to be dealt with. Then you've got, we talked about regulation. For me, the most important bit of regulation is Regulation such that the consumer knows what they're buying, because the consumer is the person who's going to change this. It's the consumer, but if they're ill-informed, if they don't understand what they're buying, if they haven't got something they can trust, then they're not going to quite know where to spend their money. So that regulation is very important. Of course, my thing is get stuff done now, because that is the low-hanging fruit, do it. But of course, at the same time, we're working on stuff. We're working on stuff for in five years' time, doing R&D. For, for net zero aluminium, we're doing a trial in the next 12 months on our rims for our bike along that line. So there's lots of stuff going on, but that, the problem most of all is get going, get started. The other stuff you've got to work on, but, but it's the inaction. And once you start doing stuff and you realize how easy it is, you build momentum and everything else comes. Brilliant. Will, Gavin, Elena, I think this has been the Just Do It panel. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> <laughs>